grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to this Minster Church on this last Sunday after Trinity. Uh, you will have already noticed that we don't have the organ with us today. It is the second part of the repairs that took place in during the summer when which were delayed because people certain people had COVID who were involved in those repairs. So it's off for a week. We shall be back with us next Sunday. And we are blessed we've got Andrew who's going to cant up us because the choir also are on their half term having a well deserved rest too. Welcome if this is your first time here. Welcome if you're a regular with us and welcome indeed if you are joining us online. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ, in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory, I in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus, ole voluntatis. Amen. 
let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that, through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Give to Most High as he has given to you, and as generously as you can afford. For the Lord is the one who repays, and he will pray, repay you sevenfold. Do not offer him a bribe, for he will not accept it. And do not rely on a dishonest sacrifice, for the Lord is the judge, and with him there is no partiality. He will not show partiality to the poor, but he will listen to the prayer of one who is wronged. He will not ignore the supplication of the orphan or the widow when she pours out her complaint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be Lord. to God.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. of 
synagogue worship, made by the Pharisees and the rabbis that kept the Jewish faith going. Them and every Jewish woman who kept a kosher home and maintained the Jewish family. But the Pharisees weren't a good thing. They weren't good people. Which is why the Pharisee we just heard very rightly and properly didn't take any credit for that for himself. He just thanked God that he wasn't like all the thieves and rogues and adulterers or even that tax collector. Thank God that he was able to keep the law just as every morning for the same reason he thanked God that he was born a man rather than a woman. Nothing for which he could take any credit, so thanks be to God. Pharisee was a good man, and he thanked God that he was able to be a good man. So what's wrong with that? Well, let's go to the tax collector. Justified. And again, this is all, or it should be, familiar stuff. It's actually quite a challenge for a preacher to find in today's society in this country anyone to compare with the tax collector. We don't have an occupying army. Thank God. But the tax collector was somebody who extracted money by threat of force from his own people in order to pay for the upkeep of the occupying army. The army that regularly and often crucify his fellow Jews. Not only did he take money to pay for the army, he took money for himself as well. He added a hefty percentage on top. So, not just a traitor, but an active part of the oppression. society. But there is nothing to compare with the visceral level of collaborating with the enemy. And for that we should be grateful. But recognize just how much this tax collector was hated and how offensive the words of Jesus were. collector is the worst of all possible men. And he knew it. Which takes us back to the question I left hanging a little while ago. The Pharisee was a good man and he thanked God for making him so. What's wrong with that? God, I am a bad man. And by implication, help me. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He knew himself, and he knew his need of God. His ongoing, every day, every minute, need of help, of forgiveness. He 
he knew he needed God. Maybe that was because everybody he met despised him and there was nobody left but God for him to turn to. But he knew he needed God. The Pharisee, on the other hand, was a good man, grateful to God, able to live a good life. So he didn't need God anymore. He trusted in his own righteousness. And so he was closed. He didn't doubt his own righteousness because he kept the law. He never questioned his faith because he knew he was right. Despite the words of his friend, despite his piety, despite his goodness, he was actually closed to God. He was right, so he didn't need God anymore. ourselves off to God. We prevent our minds being changed. We have faith, so that's all right. We are in church, so that's okay. We're all right. It's also a parable of doubt, of uncertainty, of being prepared to venture outside the walls of that which we have always believed, to think, I wonder. And the walls of that which we have always believed may not be what we expect. The walls of tradition or traditional Anglicanism or traditional our sort of Anglicanism, they can be the most unlikely of walls. We can be so buttressed in our own liberal, free-thinking agenda we don't consider any alternatives because we are right and we know we are right and we have God on our side. We are here to remind ourselves to put our trust in God who will forgive our sins. We are here to remind ourselves God knows us through and through to trust in his love and to say, therefore, from the depths of our hearts, God, be merciful to me, a sinner.
Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for 
the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ in the one Spirit. We were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word. <coughs> through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, 
We proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. George and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one way. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and greatness. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs that are your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and be in us. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. <coughs> God of all grace, your Son, Jesus Christ, fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. You be seated, please. I ask you to continue as you leave today to hold in your prayers the families of the children who are going to be baptized. Indeed, pray for us too, because one of them is a six-year-old, I think which may well be a challenge for some of us who are here to answer this. Uh, you will have been offered a, 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 a something to pin onto your jacket or your sweater, uh, and it's about a, a project that the diocese has come up with about wearing your faith fortnight. That's what it's entitled. And you wear something that's pinned to you to instigate conversation, it seems, so that somebody may ask you what is that and then you can speak to them about what it means to be a Christian and to be a light for Christ and speak to them in that way. So it is something that's to initiate conversation. Hopefully uh, there'll be one left for you should you wish to but if you haven't got one uh, then certainly most of us I think, uh, already wear crosses or whatever anyway and it is something over these next couple of weeks to try to engage people and witness to our faith. So should you wish to take part in that, there's an opportunity for you to do so. You'll also see again that the, uh, there is a place for the names to be put down for the Eucharist on All Souls Day, which will be the uh, 2nd of November, which is quickly coming upon us now. And again, it's where we remember those who have died we name them out in that service. You don't have to be here for that service, although if you are, that's always good. But you don't have to be, but we will name them out in that service anyway. And next Sunday, we shall be celebrating All Saints Sunday. Um, and we will have Mary, who's our worker with the homeless and the complex lives. And she will have a part in the service where she will speak about her work. And I have to say, the staff that she has done is quite commendable what she's already doing and there may be an opportunity for us to as a congregation to engage with some of her work which is trying to alleviate some of the difficulties that the homeless people here in the city of Doncaster have and again you'll see that there's a coffee morning on this coming Friday again for that group of people who are already engaging but it isn't only for them anybody who wants to hear and get and feel as if you have something to offer in the uh, work with the homeless people of Doncaster to come along and hear a little bit about that. And then don't forget to put your clocks back next week or you will be an hour early and then you may be in the choir, you never know. So they'll be practicing. Let's stand to sing our final hymn.
Andrew, Andrew, and Jude Day, who will be playing the piano for us today. Lovely, thank you very much indeed. Do stay for refreshments if you are able to do so. If you go from this place, the Lord be with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.